So this is problem 13 from the Spring 2000 Amatic Student Math League contest. First thing to note here is on the actual problem sheet, this problem number was mislabeled. It said 12. Um, that should be 13. So this really is problem 13. There are two 12s here. Um, not a huge issue, but just if you're trying to uh, make this match at different sources, it might be useful. Okay. Question is, how many integers from 1,000 to 2,015 when tripled have no even digits? So the way I'm going to attack this, first of all, is I'm not really going to look at numbers from 1,000 to 2,015. I'm going to write that down. But I'm going to look at um, sort of those numbers all tripled. So if we triple 1,000, we end up at 3,000. If we triple 2,015, we end up at 6,045. So really what I can do is find all the numbers between 3,000 and 6,045 that are both multiples of 3 and have no even digits. So that's essentially what I can do is translate the problem back to 3,000 to 6,045. And then I can also notice that if I have no even digits, well, I can't actually have 3,000 because 0 is even. So the smallest number I can have is replace those zeros with 1, 3,111. The biggest number I can have, well, I can't have a 6, so I can do a 5. And then the other digits could all be 9s. So I'm really looking for numbers between 3,111 and 5,999 that are both multiples of 3 and do not have any even digits. So that's our sort of translation of the problem here into a little bit easier space to work with. Now, no even digits here. That means my digits are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. They're all odd here. So I get those digits here. Um, so that's the digits I'm working with. The other thing I'm going to look at is being a multiple of 3 is, well, let's just write it this way. How about if I do a number, how about x, y, Z, W, and I'm thinking of this as like 3, 1, 1, 1. So this is the thousandths place, hundredths place, tens place, W in the ones place here. And we're going to say this is a multiple of 3. There's a trick here, and that's the same thing as saying that X plus Y plus Z plus W is a multiple of 3. So what I can do here is instead of looking at really this four-digit number here, just add the digits and check if that's a multiple of three. Now, the way I'm going to use that here is I'm going to look at all my numbers. Either the first digit is a three, and then we've got, well, let's say it's x, y, z, three more digits. Or the first digit can be a five, and then I have some x, y, z here. Note I can't do a four because four is even. So I've got numbers that look like 3xyz, 5xyz here. Now, if I do 3xyz, what I've got here is this tells me that x plus y plus z, well, 3 is already a multiple of 3. So if x plus y plus z, that better be a multiple of 3. So they're all odd. x, y, and z are all odd. And their sum is a multiple of 3. Now. With 5xyz, okay, this is a little bit tricky here when we think about this, but x plus y plus z, maybe plus 5, is a multiple, oops, multiple of 3. Note here, I could do a plus 3. I'll just write that in up here. I could do a plus 3 here, but adding 3 to a number that won't change whether that number is a multiple of 3 or not. So I don't really need that up above, but I kind of need the 5 here. I could replace that 5 with a 2 here as well, because then it would be 5 is 2 plus 3. Okay, so we're going to basically look at how do we get x plus y plus z to be a multiple of 3 using numbers from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And how do we get x plus y plus z plus 5 to be a multiple of 3 using numbers from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So to do that here, whoops. Scroll up here. I already want to go down. Here, so to do that, what I'm going to look at is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I'm just going to sort of build three digit strings from here. So what I'm going to notice here, let's just rewrite this down, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, is I'm going to split this into three groups. So I'm going to let group A be 1 and 7. 
Now, why 1 and 7? These are the numbers that when I do 1 divided by 3 or 7 divided by 3, I get a remainder of 1. So divide by 3, get a remainder of 1. So this is remainder 1. And just do a group B, about 3 and 9. Uh, I guess let's just write it this way. This is a remainder when I divide by 3, remainder of 0. And then group C is just 5. And this is remainder 2, or perhaps negative 1 if you want to think of it that way. Remainder 2 when I divide by 3. And essentially, then, because of the way uh, these multiples of 3 add, is I can just look at sort of strings of A, B's, and C's instead of 1, 7, 3, 9, and 5. So our possible strings, three digits, um, let's look at this. First of all, I could get A, and I'm going to write this as A to the third. So I'm going to think of this as an A, and then an A, and then an A. So an example here, let's just write up an example, could be like 1, 7, 1, 1, 1, 1, 7, 1, 1, those kinds of strings, three digits, all either 1 or 7. Another example string, I could do three Bs. So first of all, I'm going to do everything with no Cs here. Three Bs. Or I could do two A's and a B. Or I could do an A and two B's. Note here, I'm not paying attention to the order. So like two A's and a B, that could be something in an A, something in a B, something in an A, or something in a B, and then an A, and then an A. Both of those I'm going to count there. We'll count with the order later on. Okay, so that's everything that can happen with no C's. Now with one C, let's see, I could get two A's in a C, you get two B's in a C, or I could get an A, a B, and a C. Again, I'm going to worry about the order later on, so this could really be a C and then an A and then a B. With two C's, I could get an A and two C's, I get a B and two C's. With three C's, I just get three C's. So now what I'm going to do is think about the remainder of the sum of these digits. So this is my remainder here. And then we can go back up and sort of think about what that means in terms of the first digit being a 3 or a 5. So when I have three A's, well, they're all remainder 1. So it would be remainder 1 for the first digit, plus the next digit that will add, give me remainder of 2. Third digit will give me remainder of 3. But 3 is effectively 0 when I'm talking about remainders. You divide 3 by 3 again and get no remainder. 3 B's, well, they're all 0. I add those up, I get 0. Now, 2 A's and a B, I'll get a 1, plus a 1 is a 2, plus a 0 is a, still a 2. So 2 A's and a B will give me a remainder of 2. An A and 2 B's will give me a 1, 0, 0, that's a remainder of 1. 2 A's and a C would be 1, plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4, but 4, when I take a remainder again, or take a divide by 3 again, that gives me a remainder of 1. 2 b's and a c, that's 0, 0, plus 2, that gives me a 2. And a, a b, and a c, 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 2 is 3, divide by 3, remainder is 0. a and 2 c's, I get a 1, and then plus a c is 3, plus another c is 5, divide by 3, effectively that's a remainder of 2. A B and 2 C's. 0 plus 2 is 2, plus 2 is 4. Divide by 3 gives me a remainder of 1. 3 C's is going to be 3 times 2 is 6. Divide by 3, that's a 0. So you get the remainder. And then we can worry about how many of each of these strings there are as well. So we have our remainders. How many there are? Well, if I do three digits that are all in the A's, well, they're each 1 and 7. So I have really a choice in the first digit, two things. Second digit, two things. Third digit, two things. That's two to the third. That's eight. So there's eight options looking like A cubed. B cubed, same thing. Two to the third, that's eight. Two A's and a B, well, essentially this could be ABA or BAA or AAB. I have three options to figure out which of the three slots is the B, and then the two A's are the other two. So I'm going to do is multiply by three to figure out which one's the B. And then each of the A's, I have two options. So that's 2 squared or 4. And then the B, I have two options. I can either do 3 or 9. It's 2. So this is going to be 3 times 8. That's going to give me 24 different strings. AB squared, 
Now here, choose three, one of the three spots for the A, and then the A has two options, the B has two squared options, that gives me 24 as well. A squared C, you have three choices for where the C goes. The A gives me two squared options. The C, now there's only one digit in the C sort of um, group, and so that's one. So I get four times three, that's 12. B squared C, three choices for the C. The B has two choices each. C has one, so three times four, that's 12 again. Now this A, B, C here, I can sort of permute A, B, and C around. That's three factorial or three times two. So that's sort of all the orderings of A, B, C. Um, maybe I'll just write those out here. That's A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, B, A, C, A, B, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see three factorial. That's a notation for a six. Different ways, three times two times one. So that's just sort of changing or permuting the A, B, and C around. Now for the A, I have two choices. For the B, I have two choices. For the C, I have one. So I get a six times two is 12 times two. There's 24 of those. Next one, A times C squared. Pick a spot for the A in three ways. A has two choices. The C has one, because it's a one squared. Three times two, that's a six. B, C squared, pick a spot for the B. Pick which digit the B is. Pick the digits for the C. I mean, there's only one, so you're not really picking anything. Three times two is six. C cubed, let's see, I just have a one to the third, effectively, that's one. Now, when I do this kind of calculation, one thing I'd want to think about here is maybe I want to double check. I didn't say miscount any of these. These should add up to, they should add up to 125 here, which is five cubed. If I think about this, each of the three slots has five choices and five times five times five gives me five cubed, 125. If I add these up, eight plus eight is 16, plus 24 is 40, plus 24 is 64, plus 12 is 76, plus 12 is 88, plus 24 is 112, plus six is 118, plus six is 124, plus one gives me the 125. So it gives me some confidence that I didn't sort of miscalculate one of these numbers. Okay. So we got our chart here. Now, what we're gonna do is go back up and look at what was going on here. Uh, let's see, so this says, if we start with a three, we need an x plus y plus z to be a multiple of three. That is, we need a remainder of zero. So if we start with a three here, the ones we're gonna get is we're really gonna get this eight, this eight, remainder of zero, remainder of zero, that 24, and that one. So what we get is if we do a string 3xyz, the number of those is 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 24 is 40, plus 1, that's 41. Now if we started with a 5, we need x plus y plus z to be plus 5 to be a multiple of 3. So that means really x plus y plus z, so 5 is a remainder of 2, so x plus y plus z would have to have a remainder of 1, and then we get one plus two would be three, that would give us our multiple of three. So really the five is gonna start with the thing, or gonna have numbers that give us, have the x, y, z that give us a multiple, or sorry, a remainder of one. So let's just go through here. So we do five x, y, z. Which ones are those? Well, that's my remainder of one. So I pick up that 24, that 12, and that six. 24 plus 12 is 36, plus four is 42. And then I just add those together, 41 plus 42, that's 83 total options. So now I wanna go back up and probably check to make sure that was one of my options. There's my 83, so my answer is D, 83.